we now have the device open, so let's take a closer look inside. So this is the front part of the 10 kilowatt hybrid inverter. And as you can see, I have removed some of the wires already. And that's just a matter of me being able to actually gain access to the system. This one goes there, and this one goes over here. The battery goes in in this end here, and you have uh, some kind of fuse on the positive side. And it goes up to this main DC-DC converter board. So this is actually the main system that converts back and forth from or to the battery bank. Uh, it's connected on both sides and I'm guessing this is the main board that converts the low voltage DC to the high voltage system that are some kind of the common ground in this inverter. So let's see what else we have on this side. This little board over here, that you can see in this end, is the communication board or the board that you have the external parts for, the relay and everything. So if I'm not mistaken, this board do the main synchronization, but don't hold me responsible. On the other side, on this side here, we have the output and the input that do controlling how to switch between the loads. Um, it looks to be some kind of, yeah, it goes from the grid and to the input board. So this is made, basically, this little board here controls when you are sending back to grid or not. So let's switch it over. So this is the back side and here we have even more boards. Uh, first of all the board that you see here is the main AC switching board. This is what creates the AC power from the actual bus, the, the actual middle bus. So you have three, actually six outputs. You have the output for the load source and you have the output for the grid source if I'm not mistaken here. Uh, nice big caps and a lot of controller parts. If we look down here, this, as you can see here, is the main, main board. This is the board that do all the controlling and all the specification or all the stuff involved between the boards. You have the main CPU in the middle there. Underneath here you have some big chunky relays that are clicking between the different sources and it looks like this is such a board as well. There's even more boards underneath here, but they, I'm not sure what they are doing for. But as you can see, it seemed to have a very decent, nice setup, a lot of chunky parts, but as you are aware of, mine did broke, and that's unfortunate. We have the main board here, and that's actually what is not working anymore. So when I took a look inside here, it was not that hard, to see what's going on. As you can see, you have burn marks inside here on the two main bridges. And when checking closer, it's rather easy to see that I have several of the IGBT MOSFETs burned out. And there is some kind of short in there. When this did burn out, it also did kill one of my main fuses and one of my main switches. So there must have been a big, huge spike. But the interesting part is that on the Batrium system, I did not see any current going back and forth from the battery. So it must have been an internal issue on this system. I have been talking to um, MPP support about this and it have taken a couple of weeks but as soon as I got it shipped the new parts it took like three days before it to arrive and it have arrived today. I got switched out three parts this main board here is switched out and two other boards so we will take a look at what they have done.
So we ha have the main DC board. Why they wanted to send me everything, I don't know. I'm not sure if everything is actually broken or not. Uh, nevertheless, I'm going to switch out everything because I cannot afford to not switch it out. When adding the boards back together again, it's important to get all the screws screwed into place. There are a couple of screws here that actually act as the transfer for the current or the power going through this board to the next board. Some of the bigger cables that go between the boards for controlling it actually have clips to hold them in place. Not all have that and you will see that a bit later on. So we're going to switch out that board and that board. I don't know why we're switching out this board frankly. And before we start to do that, we need to take images or pictures. It's time to put it all together again. And yes, there are plenty of screws to screw in. And here you can see that I pick up the hot glue gun. And that's just because I do want to keep all the wires in place that were in place before. It's time to get the device up again on the wall. It is heavy, 4 to 5 kilos. I got it up and now it's time to hook it up. As you can see I'm adding an extra fuse here just to make sure that everything is safe. A 50 amp fuse should protect it if anything else is happening when I'm powering it up. And it actually connects up to the new inverter and if we take a quick look at the inverter you will see that it actually started to up to actually charge the battery bank and that means something is going and it's charging with 60 amp into the battery bank currently and that's because this inverter is not configured properly it's not a big problem though um, but I need to change that ASAP and if we check the Grafana we can now see that we went from minus 10 to plus 40. So it's basically pushing in a lot of amps into this one. And on the other one it's pushing in 15 amp right now. So it's actually doing its job, filling it up again. Uh, but we need to change that a little bit because I don't want to be pushing in 3 kilowatt of power to the battery bank from the grid. So device control, parameter settings, let's see what we have set here. Uh, battery cutoff, we changed that to 50 volt. So
so let's apply that setting and since we are running 3.5 3.5 times 16 so the maximum voltage should be 56 volt 56 floating we set that to 56 as well or 58 55.8 apply and grid type backup number two and we apply that first and now it will be clicking I think charging swatch PV only apply Guys, the inverter is now up and running again, finally. It did took some time before they got the new boards shipped, but it seemed to be working fine. Um, I need to tweak it in a little bit again because all the settings are not set up. But it is working, and as soon as the sun comes out tomorrow, I will be testing the PV as well. What I need to do now is, of course, tidy everything up and get the monitoring working again because I have not had it up and running for a while. And then I'm going to install the big shunt chips that I have been had lying around. And I'm also waiting the electrician to come by to sort the ATS and automatic transfer switches and everything. So this actually powers my full house so I can switch it over. So once again guys, thanks for watching and see you next time. Bye.